And now let me put those together. So this is going to be x plus z minus minus, what is that, just root 2? Okay, I'm going to go to Desmos and I'm going to graph this. I'm going to try. Let's see how I do. I'm going to graph this plane. I'm going to graph a unit sphere and I'm going to plot that point. It should look like a plane tangent to that. How do you, what do y'all think? You think we got it or no? I'm feeling pretty, not confident, no. I'm feeling pretty good. But I'm going to graph this sphere, I'm going to graph this sphere the old school way. All right? I'm going to do x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. Okay, I'm going to do the old school fashion, right? And then now I'm going to graph this, let me try the point first. Um, square root 2 divided by 2 comma 0 comma square root 2 divided by 2. Ooh, I see a point. Did you all see it pop up? Yeah. Sorry. I always forget that you, there's a bunch of crap up here that I can't see on my screen. There's my point. And now, drum roll. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. X plus Z minus square root of 2 equals 0. Feel pretty good about it, right? There it is. So we found the equation of the plane that is tangent to that sphere at that point. Who cares? <laughs> so what's the point of it, right? What's the point of this? So the point, the point of this is that Hmm. So, think about this. I didn't mean that like I was serious. Think about this. Let's go back to Cal 2 for a second. When we have a curve, if we wanted to know the arc length, the arc length, then what we do is we find the length of a little infinitesimal piece, right? We find out how long it is, and then we do the total length of the whole curve will be the integral, right, of that arc length. And we've extended that in this class into three-dimensional space. That if you have a three-dimensional curve, right, doesn't matter where it is, we can find arc, arc length as well. And we have a formula for that, right? Anyone remember what it is? It's an integral from A to B, where A and B are your restrictions on T of the magnitude of the derivative, dt. Anyway, we've done it. We can go back and look, OK? We can, but again, the point is, what we did was we, we cut into infinitesimal pieces, right? We found the length of that little piece and add them up, right? Well, now what we have is a surface. And we're coming up with the tangent plane. What if I wanted to know the surface area of that surface? then what would you do? You would take the surface. Here's the surface, right? Living in three-dimensional space. If I want to know the surface area of this, I would, I would take a little infinitesimal patch, wouldn't I? This little infinitesimal patch. I would find the area of that, and then add them all up. Well, how do we find the area of the infinitesimal patch? Do you remember that if you take two vectors, right, two, take two vectors and cross them, that you get the magnitude of that is the what? If I take two vectors, yep, if I take two vectors and I take their cross product and I take the magnitude, I get the area of the parallelogram formed by them. So somehow these two tangent vectors, although they were useful in finding the equation of the tangent plane, if I take those two vectors and cross them and take the magnitude, I get the area of, of part of the plane, right? And what I'm going to do is take a little infinitesimal piece of it, and then I'm going to find that area, and then I'm going to add the whole thing up, and it'll give us a surface area of everything. Okay, so why do we do this? That's why. Because we are about to have a tool that allows us to find the surface area of any surface, not just a sphere, not just a 
you know, cone any surface, so long as we can do this. So there it is. Given a surface S with parametric equations R of UV, the surface area is this. Okay, the magnitude of the cross product. See, I told you it would be there, right? The magnitude of the cross product. That's the area of the parallelogram of those, of those two vectors, right? The DA is the making it infinitesimal. It's, it's doing a shrinking of it. Watch, I'll show you in this, this animation. Maybe. This is kind of too big. Let me make this a little smaller. Man, this floor shakes so much. Okay, so there's that, there's that sphere, right? Now, hold on. So we can go anywhere, we can go anywhere on this. I'm sorry that that's so small. Let me zoom in on that. Oh. Okay. So I can move this around, right? I can go anywhere I want on this and cross and, and find the two partial derivatives, which give me two vectors. I can cross them and I can find the area of that little plane piece, right? That's not what we want. We want this infinitesimally small. So what we want to do is shrink it, right? Like we want to shrink this down. Like that's the regular plane right there, like that. We want to shrink it. And to shrink it, to shrink it down infinitesimal, we have to scale it. What we scaled by previously was like dx was the infinitesimal, right? Here it's dA because it's two-dimensional. So that's why in our integral we have dA. It's going to be the area of the parallelogram scaled. Add them all up, double integral. Okay. Well, then in that case, find the, uh, find the surface area of a sphere. Unit sphere, sorry. So do you all know the formula for the uh, surface area of a sphere of radius r? You don't? You don't know off the top of your head? Okay, then let's change the problem. Let's not make it the unit sphere. Let's make it a sphere of radius r. Let's generate the formula, right? I know we could just open our formulas or just Google it or something, right? But let's actually prove that the area of a sphere of radius r is whatever it is. Okay? And then we'll check our answer. So unit sphere, um, sphere, radius. Uh, well, there's one for volume, and there's one for surface area. Okay, here we go. First, I need to draw it. Okay? First, I need to draw it. So to draw it, R of UV is, all right, pay attention to this part, it's not the unit sphere anymore, right? So I'm gonna put R cosine U sine V, R sine U sine V, R cosine V. And of course, our, our standard restrictions, U is between zero and two pi, and V is between 0 and pi. So this is our standard spherical coordinates. I'm using u for theta and v for phi. v for phi. It rhymes. v for phi. All right, so what do I need to do? I'm going to put it on the side here, what we're trying to do. We're trying to do the double integral over d, right, of the magnitude of the par uh, partial derivatives that are cross product, dA. That's what we're going to try and do. So I have to take a cross product. Got bad news. You know how we did it at that particular point a second ago to avoid all that? We're going to have to do it now. Okay, so it's all right. We won't, we'll be all right. So partial bar with respect to u is, all right. R is going to come for the ride. Okay, uh, partial with respect to u. There's going to be a negative in front of this. Sine u, sine v. Okay, y'all just read it out to me. R cosine u sine v 
Zero. Okay, good. That's our partial with respect to u. Partial with respect to v. R? Cosine u, cosine v. Okay. R? Sine u, cosine v. Finally, negative r, sine v. All right, are we all in agreement that, that is the, th those are the two partials? Any questions? Oh, we get to cross it now. Shit. All right, so here's the cross. It's a vector. All right. Oh, my goodness. All right. Let me get a towel here. So I'm going to cover this one up for a moment. Oh, man. This is going to suck. Okay. I've got to do this times this minus this times this, right? So when I go here to here, I've got a negative r squared sine squared u sine v cosine v. Woo. That's just this to this, right? Minus, now here to here, right? So r squared cosine squared u sine v cosine v? All right. Looks horrible. Let's double check it. Negative r squared sine, u, sine squared u sine v cosine v. Minus r squared cosine squared u sine v cosine v again. That sucks. Okay, the middle one is going to be minus. Let's figure out. I'm covering this one up. All right, and I'm going to go here to here. So r squared sine u sine squared v. Oh. r squared sine, wait, hold on. Yeah, r squared sine v, no, no, hold on, sine u, sine squared v, that's that, times that, and then minus zero, yeah, minus zero, at least that was all right, and then I'll have to put that negative through, right? One more, cover up this one, Oh, wait. Cover. Oh, shit. I did that one first. What am I doing, Robert? That's why I was confused. You, you yeah, I'm having that day. Okay, it's all right. Hold on. Hold on. What am I doing? I'm just going to move it to the back. That's why you're looking at me like I'm a fool. Sorry about that. I'm going to go off the screen here is what it is. More lashings for me. <laughs> I start to pick them up towards the end of the semester. I start to really pick them up. All right, you all understand what I did wrong there? Yes, sir. I, I covered that one. That's the last step. We did the middle one right. I needed to cover this one, right, to get our first one. Okay, let's do that. What is that? Um, negative, negative r squared. Yeah. Negative r squared cosine u sine squared v, right? Minus. Minus. Zero, yes, thank goodness. All right, let me clean all this up. Okay, and then this one, I'm going to distribute that. Negative r squared sine u sine squared v. And then on this one, hey, can't we do something here? Can we pull out a negative r squared sine v cosine v? What would happen if I pull negative r squared sine v cosine v out of both of these? I get sine squared u plus cosine squared u, which would become a 1. So it's really just minus r squared sine v cosine v. I mean, I guess 
I'll take the lashings, you know. They'll be well deserved, but at the end of the day, we are trying to prove that the surface area is a sphere, you know. It's not it's not every day that you come up with formulas that we use all the time, right? Magnitude. Shh. The magnitude of this now. Crap, right? Yeah, it's the square root of Right, everything in there squared. So, but added together. So that's actually maybe not going to be so bad. R to the fourth, right? Uh, cosine squared u sine to the fourth v plus R to the fourth sine squared u sine to the fourth v plus R to the fourth sine squared v cosine squared v. Yeah. Don't think I can make this any better. Yeah, it's as good as it's going to get there. All right, y'all see anything I can do? Yeah, on the first two terms, what can you pull out GCF-wise, just on the first two? R to the fourth, sine to the fourth V out of both of those. Y'all see that? Pull out an R to the fourth, sine to the fourth V, and then you'll have cosine squared U plus sine squared U which turns into one. Okay, let me put that up here. So I'm continuing now. How are we doing on time? Jeez. Okay, so equals square root of, we pulled out an r to the fourth sine to the fourth v, right? And then the rest of it turned into a one. So then I'm left with this over here, which is plus r to the fourth sine squared v cosine squared v. Anyone see what I can do now? I can pull out an r. Pull out an r to the fourth sine squared v. r to the fourth sine squared v, and what's in here? Sine squared v plus cosine squared v, right, which is one. So we just get the square root of that, which is r squared, and the square root of that, which is that. Which, by the way, everyone, is the Jacobian determinant Rho squared sine yeah. V. Okay, but it was fun anyway, right? I mean, we were doing the, the same thing that we did during that process, right? Okay, now, hold on. What the hell are we doing now? We have to do a double integral, right? So now we're going to set up this double integral. We're going to do a double integral over D of R squared sine V dA, right? That's going to give us our surface area. Now, what are our restrictions on R and V? Do we have restrictions? Yeah. Uh, no, hold on, there's no, there's no R. R is a constant, right? Yeah. Okay, so I can pull the constant completely out, R squared. Double integral over D of sine V dA. So do we have restrictions on V? Zero to pi, and U? Zero two pi. There's no u's in there, but that's okay. I'm going to still turn this into a double integral. This is going to be r squared. Let's go sine v. Let's do dv du. Let's do it that way. dv du. v here is zero to pi, and u here is zero two pi. Okay, r squared integral zero two pi. Okay, first we do the antiderivative of sine v negative cosine of v evaluated from 0 to pi. v equals, right? But we kind of know that. But And then we still have du out here. So what happens when you plug in pi into this? You get negative 1, but then negative negative 1 is 1. Then you subtract what you get when you get 0 in here. So 0, 1. So 
So now I'll show it. I'm going a little too fast here. This is r squared integral 0 to 2 pi still. When we plug in Okay, when we plug in pi, we got what? One, one right? It's negative cosine of pi, but that's negative one, so this is one. And then over here, we plug in zero, we get negative cosine of zero, but cosine of zero is one, minus, minus one. This is gonna be a plus one, isn't it? That's all gonna be a two. Okay, so we make sure we're clear on that, and then now that two can come out of everything, right? Two r squared, integral 0 to 2 pi of 1 du. What's that? Yeah, okay, the antiderivative is u times u, and then evaluate 0 to 2 pi. So you just get 4 pi r squared. Is that the surface area of the sphere? Did anyone check it? Do y'all know that? No? <laughs> Sounds right? Yes. 4 pi r squared. So the other one was 4 thirds pi r cubed, which was the volume of a sphere. We verified? Yeah? Okay. So we just proved it. So the great thing about this is that this would work for anything, any, surf, any surface, right? Any surface we ever had. How are we doing? Ten minutes. Perfect. Any surface we ever have, we can, we can do this. But, but, sometimes we don't want to be using like really complicated surfaces. Sometimes our surface can be broken down into like a simpler case, right? So the general takeaway of, the, of everything is this. This is the generic formula. If you have a parametric surface, here's what you have to do, right? That's what you have to do. But there's a special case. The special case is when z is a function of x and y. So this is when we first started talking about surfaces in the very beginning, where you have a surface up here, and your ground, your domain, x and y, are down here. This is where you had to kind of pass a vertical line test, so to speak, to be a surface in this category. You couldn't, like, wrap around. Well, if we have that, in this special case, what we do is we look at, you know, you know how we had this vector function r of u, v like this? This was some function of u and v, and then some other function of u and v, and then some other function of u and v. You know, that's our, that's our generic one. Well, if, if we... Um, have that z is a function of x and y only, what we can do is we can just replace u with x, we can replace v with y, <clears throat> and then our, our last one over there, so this will become, this will become basically x, y, and then this right here will just be whatever that function of x and y is. So it's like a very, it's a simplification of this into something very nice, and that's, that's what I have right here. Okay, x is x, y is y, z is some function. And so when you do the, when you do the uh, partials, look what happens to the partials. Do you see I'm using uh, x and y instead of u and v? Okay, so what would the partial of this with respect to x be? What's the partial of that with respect to x? 1, 0, and then whatever this is. How about partial of f with respect to x? And then what would partial of r with respect to y be? 0, 1, and partial of f with respect to y, right? All right, cross these. See if I can do this without screwing up. Cross them. 0, negative, partial of f with respect to x, right? OK, now the middle one would be the opposite of what I get right here. Here to here, partial with respect to y, 0, change of sign. One, take the magnitude. That squared plus that squared plus that squared underneath the square root. Okay, so 
in the case that your surface is a function of x and y only, you can use this instead of having to do all that stuff. You just use that generic formula. And if you use that, then your surface area formula becomes very simplified. This is the magnitude of the um, cross product of the partials. And so it's just double integral over d of that. As we will show in the next six minutes. <clears throat> so there we have a surface, right? It says find the surface area, find the surface area of the part of this paraboloid which lies between these two cylinders. So do you all see right here this, we can look at this z as some function of x and y, right? Or z as some function of x and y. We want to know the surface area of that surface. But only the part of the surface that le uh, lives between these two cylinders. So it's like we have a surface, whatever it's doing, right? This is this. And then we have these two cylinders which uh, open up through the z-axis, right? <coughs> so this one has a radius of 1, punches through, right? Punches through somewhere along here, right? And then we have a bigger, a bigger cylinder, radius 3, punches through this thing. Can you all see that? It's like we have a surface and we took this like cookie cutter. And what we're trying to do is find the surface area of this piece right here. Hopefully you can see that from the wording of the problem, yeah? All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to imagine what this thing looks like on the ground. On the ground, what is it? The domain. Yeah, it's like a washer or something, right? Not, don't think washer, some Cal 2. Cycle washer. What type of region is this? Polar, right? It's a great polar region. But let's get to it. Let's get to it. We want the surface area. The area is going to be the double integral over d. This is d on the ground. Of the square root of one plus the partials of this thing, right? Squared. So what is the partial of f? Uh, yeah, this is f, right? What's the partial of this with respect to x? Negative 2x. Negative 2x. Square it. Just 4x squared. OK, plus partial with respect to y. 4y squared. That's partial with respect to y squared, dA, OK? Any questions? How am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to realize that this region down here is polar. This is great polar, so I'm going to convert to polar coordinates now. So I'm going to go to polar, and to go for, to, to go to polar, I'm going to make my conversions, right? And tell me about this region on the ground. Tell me about this region on the ground. Your R must be between, uh, what is it? One and three between the two cylinders. And your theta, we want to swing all the way around, right? Zero, two pi. OK, so those are going to be my limits of integration. The order won't matter because they're both con they're constants, right? OK, square root of 1 plus, drum roll, 4 r squared, good. Because you could pull a 4 out of both of these, then you have x squared plus y squared. And going into polar, x squared plus y squared is r squared. So this becomes 1 plus 4 r squared. And then? R, very good, because we went to polar. Don't forget the R, which comes from the Jacobian. And then D, I went R D theta, right? There it is. And we could do that integral. Because that's a basic U sub, right? Let U be this. 
and then do that. Okay, there it is. I'm going to leave it like that because that we could do on a computer. Um, let me see if I have it worked out here. I do have the picture. Here's the picture. So you've got this surface with the two cylinders cutting through. And if I take everything out of there and just show you the surface, do you see it like that? So what we're doing is we're finding, we're actually finding that surface area. Like that seems like a very strange object to be able to find the surface area of, right? But it's actually a pretty simple integral, isn't it? Relatively speaking. Uh, I didn't actually have it there. I don't have it worked out. But again, we could do that on Desmos, or not Wolfram or Symbolab or something. Okay, let's wrap it up. So three more, three down, three more to go, and that's it. Three more lectures. So that's due the day of the final. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll talk on Wednesday about the final and stuff like that. If you need a copy of the the handout, I'll be in my office. <laughs>